These mountains I'm painting are called the cathedral spires and it really felt like I was painting something monumental out of like a scene from the Lord of the Rings or something. It, tr truly breathtaking scenery and um, I feel like this is this is why we paint for scenes like this, you know. I'm trying out a new color for sky, sky blue. I've historically always used ultramarine blue, but I'm kind of playing around with using phthalo blue by Utrecht. And I feel like uh, using phthalo blue with white mixed in really gets me a, a very lovely sky blue color. So if you haven't used that, that's kind of what I've been using for my sky blues lately. And I feel like just right out of the tube, it, it really matches quite nicely. Um, I had thought about using cobalt blue because with some of my oil paintings I had started playing around with cobalt blue, not really realizing and thinking about how toxic cobalt is. And so um, I made the switch and uh, I've been really, really enjoying phthalo. I'll have to try phthalo blue as a color for my oil painting as well and see um, if if it makes a difference. One thing I wanted to try with this is I wanted to get a really strong sense of light and dark, but I wanted to essentially stain the entire form of the mountains and let that dry and then use that as uh, the highlight so that I wouldn't have to paint the highlights and paint the shadows that I could just kind of come in with this wash to paint the highlights and then cut into that with my darks to paint the shadows quickly and define the form out of this flat shape. So my strategy was really just to wash in the colors and then cut into it um, and create slowly build up the textures and the form So you can see that I kind of have drawn in and broken down these mountains into basic geometric shapes with a light side and a dark side. I find that when I can break my painting subjects down into light and shadow sides, which I can't always do because not every subject always has that or sometimes the lighting doesn't promote that, but it did in this case. And I find that when I can do that, it really elicits better, uh, stronger paintings. And I tend to like how the paintings turn out when I can think about my subject in terms of light and dark like that. One of the things that makes gouache really convenient and one of the reasons why I brought this really tiny kit up the mountain with me is that I didn't have to worry about bringing, bringing a wet oil painting down, bringing a wet oil painting down the mountain. Um, you can see that the paint's drying, you know, as we speak, and that's going to make it really convenient for the hike back. At this stage, at this stage, the, the painting is still relatively flat and I'm just thinking about a light side and a dark side and then I'll go in and add more darks and crags and lines and delineate that shape as you're seeing me do here but I'm trying to think from just kind of creating that sense of texture because I know I can't capture all the minute details of that of that scene in front of me. I can just do the best that I can and I'm trying to reduce it down into something that reads and I'm I'm still thinking about trying to get trying to get more accurate tonal values. One thing I'm finding is that it's really challenging to make the scope of 
of these mountains read, just how huge they are. It doesn't even really translate on camera, to be honest with you. It's, it's really challenging. And I think, you know, my hope is to collect a bunch of different sketches on this trip that maybe I can turn into larger studio paintings. And so one thing I'm thinking about as I'm doing this is maybe do I want to put some figures in the landscape? I mean, they would just be the tiniest of blobs. I'm not sure yet. So now one thing that will hopefully help is I'm, I'm starting to put in the trees and I mean, there's like millions of trees. These are like millions and millions of clumps of trees. It's a forest. Um, but my hope is that as I bring the trees down, that there'll start to be somewhat of a sense of, of scope and texture and things like that. In my last video, I talked about bringing this um, smaller plein air kit and I, I'm essentially, it's, I think it's a tackle box. Um, it's about the size of a cell phone, of a smartphone. My, my iPhone would fit in it snugly. And um, I'm just using painter's tape to prop it up like this. And I'm painter taping a small four by six watercolor block um, to the lid. Um, before my trip, I had tried gluing some ropes or things for like a more permanent solution, but the glue came off. And so this was kind of just the best solution. Uh, and it actually worked, you know, over repeated uses and was quite stable and things like that. So I'm starting to put in individual tree trunks and trying to get that, um, shadow side, you know, the part of the forest that's in shadow from the mountains and the light side. And now I'm looking at individual trees and putting in the tree trunks and the highlights on those trunks and just trying to create smaller and smaller forms and textures. My palette here is from left to right. I'm using titanium white, ultramarine blue for really my darkest darks, um, phthalo blue, like I mentioned before, uh, permanent alizarin crimson, uh, cadmium free yellow, it's a cadmium yellow replacement, and lemon yellow, uh, which I didn't use a whole lot in this painting, but it's there out on the palette. Right now I'm trying to maybe redefine some of the edges in the light side. And I really am not too sure that that was necessary to be honest with you, but I'm kind of refining some edges. It didn't make a huge difference, but I wanted to fix some of my edges and paint over some uh, haloing and gaps and put some highlights back in. So I'm actually mixing an opaque mixture of white with some of the oranges. The climate up here is quite dry and one thing that I forgot to bring on this trip was a uh, spritzer bottle but that would have helped a lot to maybe keep my paints wet a little bit more. This thalo blue being so highly pigmented makes some very nice saturated greens and as you can see on the video but also just if you go outside and observe, you'll see that greens nearby are often much more saturated the closer they are to you. And um, the farther they get away, they become a little bit more cool. So I'm trying to bring forward that sense of depth by bringing some highly saturated greens closer to us at the bottom of the painting. One thing you can see is as I do this painting, I kind of have moved from large brushes to smaller and smaller brushes. I bounced back and forth a little bit, but I really didn't use that small brush until, until the end. And one of the things as I'm kind of finishing up here is I'm noticing that 
as far as tonal values, I feel like the sky is a little bit dark. So I'm mixing up a much lighter mixture for the sky to really lighten it up. And I've noticed that I have this tendency sometimes to make the sky a little bit too dark. Um, and it really needs to be much closer to white. I have to be kind of delicate with this. I need to mix a lot of paint and I need it to be not too watery so that it won't reactivate the color underneath it. I probably could have used a bigger brush or something in between my largest brush and this one I'm using. But it does allow me to get, to go back in and cut against the mountains and get a sharp contrast, sharp edges, make those mountains pop out. And because the paint underneath is totally dry, um, I can't even like kind of scrub a little bit and blend in. And I didn't really have much of a mixture other than just tinting. And so even if it does pick up some of the paint underneath, in this specific case, it won't be much of an issue because I'm just using a different ratio of white and blue. I really like the tonal values rest and you get a much more stark sense of contrast with this. So I'm excited to try and turn this into a finished studio painting. If you wanna see the previous painting in this video, click here. And remember, you have a voice that matters. Go be creative. See you next time.